Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm talking about all the series I started and the few that I finished, I guess. So I had like 30 different videos that I wanted to do during the Christmas break but like before the Christmas breaks so that I didn't have to film or do anything or do any kind of work on my two week holiday I had all these ideas I was going to do all the wrap up series type things I was even going to do like a, like a remix on a couple of them and then I was missing one key ingredient to actually do any of those videos and that was motivation didn't have it so it's Christmas Eve <laughs> and I'm filming a video. Today's video is going to be about the series that I started, the series that I've abandoned, and the series that I finished in 2020. The first thing I'm going to do is talk you through the series that I've abandoned. Look, if we start with the negatives, the only way is up. So the first is the Truth Witch series. That was one of the first books that I read in 2020, but to be honest, there was just nothing about this series that really held my attention. It was very tropey. I've said this before, it caught me at a bad time because it was so similar to Serpent and Dove and I hated Serpent and Dove that I ended up just not really enjoying this one either. Like the opening scenes are almost beat for beat the same and there's just not enough hype inside me to enjoy this series and therefore I've just abandoned it. Read the first one, thought about listening to the second one as an audiobook and then just never did so probably won't ever. The next is A Curse So Dark and Lonely. Now if you've seen my wrap up of all the books I refused to read in 2020, you'll know that I refused to read The Heart So Fist and Broken and I think there's a third one coming out. Won't be reading that one either. Not interested. Really didn't enjoy A Curse So Dark and Lonely and if you want to know why, I'll maybe stick a thing around here somewhere that you can click on to do that. The City of Brass. Now I was really disappointed with The City of Brass. I know a lot of people were really, really excited for it but I am so into character and plot driven novels and that just isn't it, wasn't it for me and the books are huge so unless you're really invested in the few characters that there are and what little plot there is I just I just couldn't get on with it, just really couldn't get on with it and I know that it's going to disappoint so many people that I didn't like it. Kudos to anyone who really enjoyed it, it just wasn't for me. The Selection I hated the first book. I was told the second one had more like intrigue and political smart and stuff like that in it but no it was just so nice and after Little Women being just like the nicest book I read this year I just wasn't for me, really wasn't for me. I really want to reread the Red Queen series because I remember being like oh my god there's so much drama in this like can I can I wade through it and I'm like well now that I read the selection and complained that that it completely lacked that like those are the two ends of the spectrum if I can find something that's like nice and in the middle that would be the sweet spot so we'll see but I hated the selection would not be continuing that series just no. Keeper of the Lost Cities, so many people hyped this book for me. So many people. It was meant to be the Harry Potter of the next generation. Like, everyone's been really enjoying it. I know that Shanice uh, Noella Reed has really enjoyed it. I think she's on like the fourth book, fifth book now. Couldn't get on with it. Just couldn't get on with it. I was, I tried reading it and was just like, this is the thing. And then I tried the audiobook because I was like, maybe I'm just not in the mood for it. No, the audiobook was worse because the voice who did the audiobook was just whiny and I don't know if I can recommend it to other people either because it just wasn't great and then the last one that I'm not be completing and I know this is gonna break Carolyn's heart but the Solar series the first book was okay I think I gave it a three in the end the characters took too long to warm up for me there were things that I was invested in I was invested in the meta mystery element of it but they just kept layering more stuff onto more stuff and to be honest regardless of like the characters and the plot which is obviously the thing that I've been banging on about for the others I cannot stand authors who try and do this like traditional Victorian English because it doesn't sound like that and it's just so cheesy and I just it just bothers it just bothers me and it's such a white person problem I know there's a very particular kind of writer and it's usually either American or Australian and they will try in English accent type thing and it just doesn't work and it just for well I mean it works for some people obviously this, this series has sold really well but I'm just not interested I'm really sorry Carolyn I'm, I might try the manga I was gonna try the manga originally and then Carolyn gifted me Solace just couldn't get on with it and I think I know a lot of people have had real issues with um red white and royal blue for the same reasons in that it's written by an American but it's meant to have a British character in it that just doesn't feel British I just couldn't get on with it so I'm really sorry Carolyn 
I won't be completing that series. That's the negative stuff out of the way. The series that I started that I've ended off. Now we come to the series that I started, fully intend to finish, I just haven't yet. Let's start with Saga. Now I read the first one in January. I am now up to the fifth one. I have no idea where one and two are. I've lost one and two. They're in my house somewhere, but I have three, four and five here. I love this series. Considering I'm not a massive fan of science fiction, this is just fantastic. The artwork is stunning and I fully intend to read the whole thing. I know that there's nine out currently, I think there's 14 available in America, but there's only nine out in the UK. So I've only got a few more to go, but I'm so excited for this series. I've heard the ending is kind of disappointing, but to be honest, I think I'll just start it again from the beginning and then just pick the end, like where I want it to end, because I, the characters are really compelling. They've all got like their own little isms. I think it's so well done. And considering like, yeah, I wasn't a massive fan of graphic novels pre 2020. This has been like the series that has introduced me to how much I love graphic novels. And yeah, haven't finished it yet. Definitely will. It's been incredible. So the City of Ghosts, uh, I really wasn't going to commit to this one, but it was on script, so I thought, why not? And it ticked off a couple of prompts for different readathons and things. So I did the first one and thought that was mediocre. The second one was better, but it wasn't amazing. But the third one is coming out in 2021. I've got to the point now where I'm like, well, if it comes out on script, I'll finish it. Maybe. But I'm not like as excited about it as everyone else is. And I know that that is not the thing to say about V.E. Schwab, but I just thought it was mediocre. But I'll probably finish it anyway. <laughs> the Book of Dust trilogy, of which there are only currently two volumes of. I read both of them. They are the biggest in size books that I've read this year. The biggest in length was A Prior of Orange Tree. That was just ridiculous. But anyway, so yes, you've got volume one and volume two. I much preferred volume one. Volume one really captured the nostalgia of His Dark Materials for me. So just for context, this is a prequel to His Dark Materials trilogy, so the Lyra Silvertongue stories. So this is when she's a baby and it has all the same kind of adventurous wonder to it. It's all set in Oxford, it's just fantastic. Really, really enjoyed this one. And then this one is a sequel. So it's when Lyra is an adult and obviously her soul has been cut from her slightly and she's trying to like find it again. It's a lot darker, it deals with a lot darker themes. There was themes of sexual assault that I was not expecting and all other kinds of things that I was just like, okay, that's my childhood you're attacking there, but obviously so well written. I love Philip Pullman. He can do no wrong in my eyes, I just would have preferred a heads up. So yeah, really, really enjoyed this. We'll be finishing this series when Philip Pullman finally finishes the third book we will finish the third volume. And then the other one is my Tolkien collection. Now obviously Ashley and Beth have been doing the Tolkien along where they're kind of going, I can't find a decent way of holding this, Jesus Christ. That'll do, right. So they've been doing a reread of all the Tolkien novels, starting with The Hobbit and they're working their way through the trilogy. And I think they haven't committed, but I think they're gonna do the Silmarillion in 2021. I am halfway through The Return of the King, doing that as an audiobook. Need to update Goodreads, thanks for reminding me. Um, but so far, my, The Hobbit has been my favorite. There is just something about this. I think it's probably that my dad read it to me when I was a baby, but it's just my favorite of all of them. It touches my heart, you know? I've just realized they're out of sync and that's made me really upset. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, I have really enjoyed rereading Tolkien, but I find it really, really hard with rereads. I guess because uh, my longest commitment is with books, so when those books fail to meet my expectations, kind of hurts. Let's not think about that too hard though. The last series that I started and haven't finished yet is Meg Cabot's The Mediator series. I'm doing a complete reread of all of the Meg Cabot books. I did finish the Heather Wells series. There were six books in that um, and there are six books in this series as well. I only have two more to go. I did really enjoy these but it got to the point where I had so many other books that I wanted to read. Rereading just kind of took a back seat but I did really enjoy this series. It completely holds up. Loved it. It's great. <laughs> if you want something that's like oh I messed up with Vampire Slayer but maybe set in a sunnier side of California and dealing with ghosts instead of vampires like this this is the one like it is basically lit like ripped from Buffy Vampire Slayer but I don't have a problem with that there needs to be more book series that feel like Buffy Vampire Slayer this is up there loved it five stars I think only one book I think maybe it was three got three stars because the romance just took too goddamn long and the actual plot wasn't very interesting but the mysteries are always really intriguing the characters are really sassy we live to see it so now we're coming up to the series mainly trilogies 
in fact exclusively trilogies <laughs> that I finished this year. So let's start with A Court of Thorns and Roses. So I got gifted A Court of Mist and Fury, I then bought myself A Court of Thorns and Roses and kind of devoured those immediately and then left it a while because I was like I really like this as a duology, I don't really need the third one and then it was released and there was a fourth one coming out so I was like oh, now I'm gonna have to read the third one in preparation for the fourth one. I did that. Um, I did it as an audiobook because I can't find a copy that matches and I think I'm just gonna bite the bullet and buy new ones and maybe sell these. But yes, so I really really enjoyed this. I enjoyed the second one so much more. The third one, it had some good stuff in it but so much of it at the end was just here comes the cavalry and that really bothered me. There was just, there was build up for stuff that wasn't used and then there was just plot armour and ex machina and it just, the ending didn't do it for me. I don't know, maybe if it had been split into two, like the lead up and then the actual thing, I don't know. Maybe that would have just made it longer. I don't know, it just didn't do it for me. The first one I liked because it was kind of a twist on something that I'm so tired of, so that was quite fun. But the second one, it was just, it was my favorite of the trilogy. I thought it was fantastic. Would highly recommend. But then I don't really need to highly recommend it because literally everyone has read Sarah J Maas. I know I was the last one to the party. I get that, but still really enjoyed it. To all the boys I loved before, this again was a series that kind of surprised me. Really didn't expect to enjoy this as much as I did. The first one kind of made me realize, oh, maybe I don't hate romance. Maybe I'm just a bitter old woman. The second one was kind of flat. I guess because of how much hype there had been on book twitter and booktube because the film was coming out i know that everyone was just like desperate for this amazing adaptation of it and i just thought it was a mediocre book really didn't enjoy it but the third one was my favorite of the series i'm just sad that it is also the shortest of the series there was just something about the build-up of going to university and her kind of reconnecting with friends and trying to build this thing with her boyfriend i felt like <sighs> The, thing, the only thing that annoyed me, because like obviously there were, there were little niggles in these ones, but like the one that really didn't need to be there for this one was the fact that the whole way through she's like, oh, we totally understand each other. I know exactly what he's thinking at any given time. Here's all these examples of that. And then the one thing that's playing on his mind the entire time she just completely misses. Okay, so that bothered me. But considering that was one little plot issue in the whole thing, like this was just five stars, loved it fantastic series i could so see myself rereading this again in a few years time jenny hammond 10 out of 10 marks like that was just it was a great little trilogy love that controversial trilogy now well controversial for me anyway because i went about it literally in the last video the never night series really interesting trilogy epic fantasy rather than ya not ya stopped calling it ya really enjoyed the first one the first one just drew me in completely the third one did a really great job of kind of sewing up all those loose ends and still being compelling and still being interesting the second one was shit didn't enjoy it at all the first one reminded me so much of the tv series nikita and then the second one really reminded me of the tv series spartacus and thankfully dark dawn didn't remind me of any tv series if it is like a tv series it's a tv series i have not seen so that was a plus in its favour. But to be honest, can Jay Kristoff just stop being rude to people on Twitter? Because I'd, I'd enjoy his content more if he could just be nice to people. That's my only gripe. I enjoyed it. My first instance, instincts, my first instincts is that I enjoyed it. So we'll just leave that there. Of course, everyone loves the Heartstopper trilogy. This was another one where I was like, I really like this as a duology. I'm gonna leave it as a duology. I read the first two, stunning. There's a fourth one coming out. So of course I had to get the third one. Really, really enjoyed it. Again, I think the second one and the third one were better than the first. I feel like at this point, Alice Eisman is just really leaning into those characters and letting them explore some really deep stuff. And I really appreciate that. I really enjoyed it. I will of course be enjoying the fourth one. I could speak English. I really hope the fourth one is just David Nelson getting herpes. That's it. It's the least you deserve for being a homophobe, you arrogant asshole. Other than that, love this series. Thought it was great. Really cute. Obviously trigger warnings for uh, eating disorders and bullying and I think there's a little bit of self-harm. Have I just completely repressed that? I'm pretty sure there's self-harm as well. Two left. So we'll end on a high, which means that the second one is not quite so. I read the Shadow of Bone series and I know that so many people really, really enjoyed this series. I thought it was alright. I thought the main character was really boring. I thought the plots were quite tropey and I feel like they missed a real opportunity to have some morally grey characters in there. I've heard that Six of Crows is better. We'll leave that there. My favourite series by far, maybe top three? 
was the Cruel Prince series. Finished that this year. I, pff, like, my only disappointment was that, that each book gets smaller. What's that all about? Why? This book should have been three times the length. But well, I love this series. I love the characters in this. I love how horrible they are. I love how rude they are. I love how plot driven they are and like motivated they are and how dramatic everything has to be for Jude. Like why can't she just take a day to chill? She just can't. It's impossible. Loved it. Loved this series. We'll be rereading this. So the two, I feel like these are the two that I'm definitely going to reread. It's been a good year for series, I think, overall, in general. Um, yeah. So there's the series that I did and did not finish. Like, how do I finish filming? What do I do now? Tell me which series you've started that you kind of don't want to finish just because you can't be asked. Leave that in the comments below. And other than that, I hope you have a nice day. Merry Christmas.